विद्यार्थी संघटने मान लीजिए मान That education is under threat in Karnataka, under serious threat. Uh, most of the reasons, most of the concerns that were raised before, um, I think, arise from a fundamental discrepancy between ideas on the very nature and approach um, and role of education in our society today, and that is what I would like to speak about for today. Um, to begin with, uh, the the government, the education. Um, it is evident that they are actively invested in a nationwide project to alter the very nature of our engagement with history and with social reform. On the one hand, the state government removes thinkers such as Periyar and Kanakadasa from our textbooks. Um, the one university in Akamadevi's name, the first women's university in, in Karnataka, they plan to change into a COVID co ed. Uh, college without increasing the number of seats. The scholarships for SCST students, they plan to reallocate to hostel funds. Despite the dismal rate of education, of access to education among Muslim girl students in Karnataka, as per the NSSO data um, in 2011, it was barely 16%. Um, despite this dismal rate, they further marginalize students from this background rather than actively combat their marginalization. On the other hand, the state has now granted approval for a more than 500 crore project of, of constructing the Anubhava Mandapa uh, in Bidar. Um, it's now also entertaining claims that the original location of this Mandapa uh, was below the Pilipasha Darga. It says that it is upholding the legacy of Pasavana by resurrecting this structure. But would Pasavana, Adama Prabhu, and Akka Mahadevi, what, what would they prefer? Would they prefer that their ideas be trapped in an empty museum, in an empty structure somewhere? Or would they prefer that their ideas live and thrive in the classrooms and in the campuses of present and future generations? The Anupava Mantapa was a space that was meant to be open for all, irrespective of caste, class, gender, whatever. It was meant to be a space for debate, for ideas that could contest each other and challenge the structures of those that are, who are in power. This was possible because their, their research topics weren't subject to scrutiny the way ours will be under the new MEP, under the National Research Foundation, which comes directly under the central government of India. It was possible because the dissenting views of students were encouraged. It wasn't, they weren't torn down by bulldozer issues, they weren't shot down on the street. Each and every campus in our country has the potential to be a space like the Anubhava Mandapa. It has that potential and the people like Chief Minister Bhammai and BC Nagesh know this. They know it and they are afraid of it and that is why they prefer their empty symbols to living ones that could thrive in our campuses. But rewriting history is not all that the government is interested in. As others explained before me, it is also failing to perform its most basic functions um, in, our, in our country. These functions of, of providing free, accessible, equitable and quality education to all were laid down by the framers of our constitution, by early education commissions in India, by leaders such as Dr. Ambedkar and Jawaharlal Nehru. These people saw education as an opportunity for the government to uplift the marginalized, to battle superstition, to battle age-old structures of exploitation such as caste and patriarchy, and to extend as a chance to extend public health initiatives regarding malnutrition, immunization, reproductive health, hygiene, and other such programs. The NEP heavy emphasis on privatization and its complete silence on the RT on issues of social justice make it clear that the government is no longer interested or no longer thinking along these lines of education. It is granting institutional autonomy, always financial, never academic, encouraging foreign direct investment and setting up and, and allowing for the setting up of foreign universities in India despite all the talk of Atma Nirmal. And, and these are just a few examples of how it is changing the very idea of education 
um, in our country. What I like to conclude with is that this ministry is not merely failing its duties because of some kind of administrative or bureaucratic um, inefficiency. It is consciously dissociating itself from these duties. It is washing its hands off. As the student youth of this country, um, we refuse to accept this change in the nature of education and we refuse also to stand quietly as the government shrugs off this responsibility um, to profit-driven corporations that we have no trust in. We will not allow the progressive history of our state to be forgotten and that is why we are here today. Thank you.